Have you ever tried riding your bike over nails? I guess it wasn't your intention, but if it happened at least once, you don't want to live through that experience again. Now imagine you'd have to ride your bike on Mars. Its surface is covered with rocks, canyons, volcanoes, dry lake beds, craters, and red dust. That combo makes those nails look totally harmless. No wheels we use down on Earth will do the trick. So NASA has been working on developing the perfect ones for use on the Moon or Mars since the 1960s. They tried smooth rubber tires with inner tubes full of nitrogen, large flexible wire mesh wheels, and airless compliant tires made of several hundred coiled steel wires. The spring tire, but nothing was good enough for the challenging cosmic terrains. The wheels of Mars Curiosity rover only lasted a bit over a year before they got seriously damaged. The rover's tires faced two big problems. First, they had to be strong enough to carry the enormous weight of the vehicle. Engineers tried to make it the most efficient vehicle for exploration, different from previous models that worked on the Moon and on Mars before it. That's how it ended up being so heavy. A big, heavy car needs durable tires, you know. And of course, the surface of Mars is no walk in the park. The engineers tried to make tires out of aluminum, which is a lightweight and strong material, but the wheels got shredded soon. The damage didn't prevent Curiosity from doing its job, but it did affect how efficient it was. And that's where the new, reinvented wheel rolled in. NASA decided to replace aluminum with a material called Shape Memory Alloy. It's made of a unique type of metal called nitinol, a blend of nickel and titanium. Unlike other materials that bend out of shape under pressure or heat, this cool substance reverts back to its original shape on its own in the same circumstances. Nitinol is the hero up on Mars, but it's also useful down on Earth. Just imagine your tires never getting punctured again. Sounds good to me. One company decided to use this tech on their bikes. The tires are tube-shaped and squashed down when you roll over a bump. They will develop perfect shape memory over time. They're supposed to work best on gravel, trail, and mountain bikes. The metal surface is covered with a rubbery outer layer. When it wears off eventually, the company plans to retread the tires to make them last for years. The previous airless tire models were made of patented foam that was supposed to last for up to 5,000 miles. They didn't take off because they made the bike too heavy. The new model is supposed to solve that problem. Nitinol also works great in the field of heart surgery. Tubes made of it can expand to the desired width under certain temperatures in the human body. The tire isn't the only object that works better with shape memory. If you can't imagine your sleep without that comfy memory foam mattress, you can send a thank you note to NASA for it. Its history goes back to 1966, when they decided to customize seats for astronauts to somehow ease the effects of G-force on takeoff and landing. Creating a custom seat for every flight seemed way too impractical, so memory foam saved the day. It easily adjusted to astronauts' body shape and went back into a rest state when not in use. In the 1980s, it went from space down to the earthly public. Now it's in mattresses, pillows, amusement park rides, horseback saddles, and football helmet liners. The third generation memory foam has gel particles and visco foam inside. That's the secret to its superpower of reducing trapped body heat, springing back up in no time, and making the mattress feel soft as a cloud. The name says it all, but in case you ever had your doubts, space blankets were, indeed, invented by NASA with space in mind. Back in the 1960s, they were preparing for the space era and looking for a thin, reflective, metallic material that would protect their spaceships from solar radiation. And they managed to design just the perfect material empiette, strong enough to be used as insulation to protect expensive space electronics from temperature swings. Ever since, it has been an important part of nearly every mission to and beyond the orbit of our planet. It's also used in spacesuits to protect astronauts from radiation and the sun's heat once they venture into open space. Down on Earth, space blankets are the best friends of marathon runners. Since body temperature drops after they stop running, they need something to help bring it back to normal. And the magical space blanket material can also protect your phone from extreme heat and cold when used as an insulation layer in a phone case. In the early 1960s, headsets for airline pilots used to be really bulky. They often had to use handheld mics to communicate. 
NASA needed a more reliable and lightweight technology for their missions to make sure the communication would go without any problems. In 1961, the Liberty Bell 7 capsule splashed down and astronaut Gus Grissom nearly sank without radio transmission or contact with his recovery team. NASA reached out to a manufacturing company to design a headset that could be planted into an astronaut's helmet. Just 11 days later, the team came up with a microphone headset unit that could be used by astronauts to communicate with one another and with Earth. It even had a noise-canceling feature. The headset was later improved and used for Mercury and Apollo missions. The world was able to hear Neil Armstrong's most famous phrase as he landed on the moon thanks to that wireless headset. Freeze-drying tech for food was not created but greatly improved by NASA to pack more snacks on long Apollo missions. During the first human missions, astronauts had to eat bite-sized cubes, freeze-dried powders, and squeeze semi-liquids out of aluminum tubes. Doesn't sound like a festive meal, right? The astronauts weren't happy about this diet, so NASA had to think of a better solution for the Gemini missions. They funded research that ended in developing special gravies that could go into edible shape in hot water in just five minutes. The idea of freeze-drying is to cook food, then freeze it under low pressure, and then slowly heat it in a vacuum chamber to remove ice crystals. Thanks to this tech, food maintains 98% of its nutritional value, with only 20% of its original weight. NASA kept improving the tech in the following decades. Now, freeze-dried food is a great help for backpackers, disaster relief programs, and anyone who needs to pack light and still get proper nutrition. The infrared thermometer that lets us check temperature from a distance was developed with the support of NASA as well. It measures thermal radiation emitted by your eardrum, a lot like they measure the temperature of stars and planets. Each device has a lens that focuses light from the object onto a special detector that converts radiation into an electrical signal and then into temperature that you can see on a display. It's used for many purposes, from monitoring hotspot temperatures in mechanical and electrical systems to checking the temperature of visitors in public places. I bet you didn't see this one coming. The technology behind selfies comes from that designed for interplanetary missions cameras. In the 1990s, one of NASA labs, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, introduced a light mini imaging system that didn't need a lot of energy to take high quality photos from space. This tech is used in cell phone and computer cameras. And if we go back to the 1960s, we'll find some good evidence that the whole idea of selfies could belong to astronauts. Edwin Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, took some selfies up there with a specially designed Hasselblad camera. He even used the spacecraft as a tripod to stabilize the image and get his face in it. Remember this if you ever end up in space with no one to take photos of you. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.